Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Fuel community. My name is Wack Wack Attack. Today is December 8th, and it's Happy Coinbase Day. So let's see. So yesterday, Fizz said a coin listing, a Coinbase listing happened, and then there's a link to the tra trading page for it. So, like we said yesterday, you know that um, it's going live. It took a week. So Zemo was right about his projections, and um, then. Uh, Fis said, I don't think of it in much in terms of instant marking result, market results, but more in terms of continuously improving the legitimacy and adoption of the platform. So that's kind of the point that I was making on the spaces a couple of days ago, is that, you know, we might not necessarily see price pumps, but this is really good because it kind of makes um, Rocket Pool look like a more established product on the market, and that is definitely a strong positive. Um, so then Luke will give us some... Uh, insight into the one inch wall that we talked about a couple of days ago that had um that had twenty um five thousand rpl that it was selling so that wall expired today so um it meant that the the sell pressure above us was less less strong so if there's any pump to be had from the coinbase listing then that would show up at that point so then uh, today, just afternoon, uh, Eastern time, 9 a.m. Um, Pacific time, um, Coinbase started listing the order book. And then at 16 minutes past 12, it went live. And um, this is where we stand right now. So let's have a quick look. If we have a look at the five minute chart. So we started at around $20 or so. And there was a small, tiny little pump to $24, which is like a 20% um, increase. But it was it was a fake pump, right? There was like next to no volume on that pump, so volume has been quite low, or or well, not quite low. I don't want to say, but like volume hasn't uh, been enough to like sustain these moves up, and now we're slowly getting a little bit more of organic move up um, at the bottom over here, like towards the bottom on the right. If you have a look at the charts, um, we're kind of bit below the below the support lines, the the. EMAs, the uh, exponential moving averages. So you know, it it's it's pointless to try to do TA on this at the moment. Um, the uni, um, the cost of uh, the RPL and uni swap right now is about the same amount. So it looks like the it's being arbed basically to get to the right price. There's already two thousand RPL of liquidity, which is really cool. And you can see from this post over here from the Esteet who says. Kraken's first 24-hour volume was $7,500. Coinbase's first one-hour volume is um, $19,000. So that's really cool to see that, you know, the Coinbase is so much bigger and is getting some adoption early on, which is fantastic. Okay, um, the next thing is uh, overnight, Joe was saying, I've started implementing LEB um, mini pool 16 migration to LEB 8. So Joe is setting up all the code. I'm not sure exactly what he means by started implementing, but um, I guess it just means that it's the next step in the development of that code and um, getting all the systems set up in place, I guess, in the smart node stack. So I think um, other developers are working on the actual contract smart contracts and then Joe, it's Joe's job to integrate that into the smart node stack. So I guess that's what he means by um, by this over here. So, you know, this is really great. Atlas, one of the great things that we're excited about in Atlas is LEB 8. So hopefully this will be here soon before we know it. Um, we're looking at middle of March, sorry, middle of February right now with the March withdrawals on the Ethereum network. I think it's just so many bullish, um, so many bullish um, catalysts one right after the other, which is fantastic. So next I got this uh, thing to share from Lee. He says, I only got into crypto during October 2021 and it's been all downhill. No way to make much of a profit yet. Just DCAing. And then um, people were talking about um, like, you know, how they made bad investments. I spent the first decades of my life with reasonable investments since 2021. Everything has turned to crap because I guess of crypto. Um, and Lee says, it's been index investing most of my life. Still am. Paid off my mortgage in 2021. Now I have some extra fun with the extra money. And um, people, Fizz came along and had a really nice comment. Um, let me see where it is. Sorry. Um, Fizz was saying, uh, wow, congratulations on getting involved then and still being aware of the big picture despite the, despite the markets. So I, the reason why I selected this comment is because some of you already know that this is kind of like my story as well. So I started buying crypto at 
December and January of 2017, 2018. And for those of you with good memories, that was pretty much the peak of the bull run at that time. So for the first couple of years of my crypto life, I was in the red. Um, I bought high, but I didn't sell. I never sold anything. And what I did start doing then is buying in uh, when I thought the market was low. Uh, the lowest ETH I ever bought was $120. Um, which I'm quite proud of. And I was able to get my per average ETH price down to like $300, $310 thereabouts. So that was, that you know, that involved holding on through a lot of red. And people like Lee and other people who have joined in the in the in this cycle now are kind of in the same position where, you know, they've seen maybe not as big drops. I think for a while my portfolio was 90% down. Um, so they've not quite seen those drops unless they've been in like Solana or something like that. But um for ETH, you know, those drops that have happened and the time, th that is a really good time for you to like start learning, start really understanding why you're involved in the pr space to begin with. And um, yeah, Lee's doing good work now, right? Making those YouTube videos explaining the smart note stack. So keep it up, Lee, and um, others like that who are in that position. Now is the time for you to um, build up your build up your um, understanding of crypto, your uh, giving back to the community and then, you know, maybe in a few years time, you'll be established members of the community. You'll be nicely in profit and everything will be good. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this. So um, I, I said yesterday that um, Anthony Sassano has been, there's a vote going on to get him onto the um, the uh, ODAO, um, Oracle DAO. And um, Fizz says regarding, Sass oh, and Superfizz is part of the ODAO as well as the ETH Staker community. Um, so it says regarding uh, Sassel's addition to the ODAO, it's an easy yes vote from me, but also believe it's my obligation as an ODAO member to represent the will of the community in my votes. I think we ought to ask questions about node operators' willingness, ability to be online, and maybe submit screenshot of their monthly Merkle tree generation in time to compare it with known entities like me, Butter, and Yorick. I've actually been chatting with Anthony a bit about this, and I'm confident in his ability to generate the tree but it never hurts to quantify that. I'm, I'm not aware of any formal process for vetting ODA members, but at this time, I'm willing to accept 50 green Sassel emojis as a strong vote of confidence. And yes, um, I'd still kind of like to see the Merkle tree, uh, Merkle tree gen time. So people like gave some emojis. I really feel like new ODA members ought to be at least as efficient at generating that tree as the top four existing nodes shrug. So, um, yeah, then explain a little bit what those trees are and like, you know, it's generating the proofs every 28 days of the rewards. And, um, yeah, then Sassel came, came along and he says, happy to provide the screenshot whenever you all want. Um, and then Jasper says his passive is his bedtime. <laughs> so then they just started talking a little bit about like, you know, working in the night and stuff and whatever. But, um, yeah, Sassel said that he's happy to provide that. And he also says that he needs to, I uh, got to buy like 700 RPL to meet the minimum for the order. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Jasper says everyone front run Sassel. So, yeah, you can you can front run uh, Anthony Sassano. Yeah. So Fizz shared this uh, pull up. He says smoothing pool donor, rocket pool, 2022, one ether. So this is the, the pull up that Fizz was talking about is getting set up so we can donate money to the smoothing pool if we wanted to. It says just an idea to, just to encourage donations to the smoothing pool and to get a pull up for it. I'm still debating, debating whether anyone will actually do it. So I was saying to Fizz a couple of days ago that I would do it, but I'm not liquid. Um, I don't have access to one ETH. So what a shame. Next, we have this post that uh, Rocket Luke shared. It's from Kyber Network who made a list of their uh, protocols that their um it says yeah the let me go back it says the top 15 DeFi protocols you must know about um after all that's happened in 2022 um uh, more people are interested in learning about DeFi. but let's be honest where should they even start so kyber swap has compiled uh, top protocols in ethereum by tvl to help you on your DeFi journey so then you have a look and rocket pool is number um 11 protocol 11 rocket pool a decentralized ethereum staking pool rocket pool provides liquid staking um, so users benefit from the increasing exchange rate instead of rebasing their staked collateral so it's not like you know it's literally not even a full tweet but um it's something at least you know people are paying attention to rocket pool and seeing what's going on with it which is good to see 
and then that kind of like brought up a discussion about um about being listed on these kind of uh, websites um but there's no need to go into that right now and then um oh the, here's the post this is uh val says i see this regularly we're quite big and uh, number 18 on this list of DeFi protocols by tvl by D DeFi llama and number 12 if we limit it to protocols that are on the ethereum mainnet uh, on top of that we provide real value to ethereum network kyber's list is extremely similar to the DeFi llama list so the DeFi llama list and the kyber list are actually the same because kyber have just monitored it by um, tvl as well so Ken shared this article from Coin Codex. Now, I've never used this website before, but this is uh, next cryptocurrency to explode in 2023. These 10 coins show bullish promise. And we have Aptos, Dogecoin, Mina Protocol, XRP, Shiba Inu, Loopring, Huobi Token, Filecoin, Rocket Pool, and Poly uh, Polygon. So let's have a look at Rocket Pool. This is one of the biggest news stories in 2022 was Ethereum's transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, Rocket Pool is the first of its kind decentralized Ethereum staking pool, allowing users to go away. Uh, allowing users to earn. Uh, that was me telling the pop-ups to go away. Sorry, not you listeners. <laughs> allowing users to earn staking rewards by depositing with little 0.01 ETH in staking pools. In addition, Rocket Pool also allows users to run an Ethereum node with 16 ETH, exactly half of what is required when staking with uh, ETH directly via the ETH ethereum 2 smart contract so the language is a little bit deprecated here already um the platform's native token is used for incentives insurance and community governance so it's it's a fair couple of paragraphs um i think you know you can go into a lot more detail there but the main thing that makes rocket pool bullish in 2023 is um lebs and withdrawals happening so rocket pool can gain a big market share and then towards the end of 2023, if Langer's uh, idea is anything to go by, then, you know, we'll get um, LEB 4s and hopefully even LEB 2s, which will be incredibly bullish for that time. So, awesome. <laughs> Next is uh, this comment by um, Jasper who says, F in hell, another. And then there's a link to a tweet by the block that says, um, Tranches, Tranches launches QETH for non-custodial liquid staking on Ethereum so um this is basically a new token and then uh, rocket looks like just confirms our thesis they'll be years behind probably i bet they'll use the same model as lido and then valdorf shares a um, chunk of the article and he says we didn't really want to be a centralized entity chunk said that's what i guess someone who works on that team adding that the company is working with node operators it can trust for technical execution um, offering decentralized alternative to major competitive staking services like Lido. So it's really funny that um, they said the key part here is um, is working with node operators it can trust for technical execution. So this is obviously like not what Rocket Pool does. Rocket Pool is completely trustless, meaning that um, we don't anyone can come and stake with Rocket Pool, whether that's buying into our ETH or whether that's running a node. Uh, provided you meet uh, the collateral cl uh, requirements so you know this is just another lido uh, competitor uh, it's not a challenger to rocket pool in any way shape or form and rocket Luke says you can't spawn a community and protocol like rocket pool has um, you know it takes time to build he says you can't do that out of nowhere and uh, jasper says just annoyed at how many are popping up without any reason to exist and then Valdorf says it'll be a f it'll be fine. They can fight each other to the death as they try to incentivize themselves into existence. They'll realize you need to bring actual value eventually, which of course many of them don't have. So, yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I missed yesterday was a couple of people sharing their uh, hours of work that they did. And um, I'm sorry, I was just a little bit um, overwhelmed by the work that had to be done. So I kind of missed these. But um, Mighty M says I looked into Linux log monitor tools like logwatch to give a daily health status of nodes operating system health and status on long running actions like pruning from log files ideally this will get into the grafana dashboard to complement what's already there but i don't know if that's possible not sure if it'll go anywhere but it was an hour of research which is really cool and then we also had romana who said i did at least an hour of work in support which is also really cool so thank you for that both of you and finally, we have this tweet from Fizz. He says, I really believe this is the, the right work. I will I hope you'll YOLO in. He says, I'm excited about this, an opportunity to share holiday gifts with deserving kids in, and receive a pop as a record. I see so much potential for this kind of fundraising mechanism. I hope you'll join in. So then there's the tweet. And, you know, the tweet has gotten some love. 
and uh, people are already um, cashing out with the with the pop right so um, I already got the pop and um, wait does it show my wallet or not oh it says 21 people have gotten the pop out of 101 people so that's really nice that they're able to raise some money for um, for kids so fantastic I hope they get toys so these are for kids in I think hospitals children at the children's hospital in Los Angeles so that's really nice to see but on that note um, I will end today's episode I hope you all have a lovely Coinbase listing day I know it might be overwhelming to some of us if we've hyped it up too much in our minds but um, we have to remember that this is a long game that we're playing and um, it's going to be good because this gives us legitimacy it gives us um, a wider audience who will learn about what rocket pool is and those are definitely good things so have a great rest of your day i'll see you all tomorrow bye